specify the sink of your legs. Well, this process of just streamlining, drawing your legs out. Yeah, I don't like that word sinker. I never ever use it. We all are sinkers. Some people sink more than others. The thing is, balance is acquired and achieved by sinking in a horizontal fashion instead of sinking like that. The reason that, and some people are sinkers. They have, they have denser bones and, and body composition is different. Some people are sinkers, all right? Even though I don't use that word, I have to acknowledge it's true. But most people are not sinkers who think they are. Uh, and one of the really surprising things about achieving better buoyancy, in other words, floating better, is relaxing. Relaxing makes a huge difference. It changes the gaseous composition of the, of the blood and the muscles from more carbon dioxide. If you are, if, if you are tense, all right, um, there's more carbon dioxide in the blood, and carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen. If you are relaxed, there's better perfusion of the blood and the muscles and the body tissues by oxygenated blood, and you float better. Every time we have people, one of the main reasons we do that Superman glide is it gets people to relax, and they're surprised to find they don't sink like they always have when they do that. But relaxing the head, relaxing the hands, having the hands, the wrist must below, be below the uh, elbow, and, and the head must be hanging for you to get into a horizontal position. But balance is sinking into a horizontal position. It's not, failing, it's not staying on top. We do not swim on top of the water. We swim through it. Couple more for Jerry. Why is it important to breathe on both sides? Um, it, makes your, it makes your movement symmetrical. When you breathe only to the left side, I was a left side breather for 10 years, and everything was sort of more over to that direction. And my right hand, you saw that really patient catch? My right hand moving so patiently into, into that catch, that never happened when I was a left side breather. When my hand was going like that quickly when I was a left side breather. It took a lot of right side breathing to allow my hand to experience, oh, it doesn't always do that, that I could actually let it sort of drift out here and in a very leisurely way feel the catch. So that's the primary reason. There was quite a difference between you swimming and the picture of your daughter swimming as far as the y-axis with the hand. Do you find a bolder? Hers was a little bit higher, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, the, the thing is... Is that shoulder flexibility? The, the, the angle, the angle of the shot was a little bit different, and I, it's, it's a moment in time rather than the whole stroke, so it's a little bit harder to tell, but we do, it in terms of... What we teach and what we have found is really essential that the arm should be on the shoulder line, not in front of the nose when it, when it extends out and makes its catch. And that in order to have your legs be light, not sinking, you want the wrist below the elbow. There should be some slope here and if the hand is hanging. If you think about if, when the front end of a kite catches the wind, the tail, the tail goes down. Think about it the same way. You're moving forward, your hand is going through water, there's the dynamic of the flow of water, and if your hand is going that way, your legs are going to sink. So you want your hand that way, not only for that, but because the first moment of pressure I put on that hand, I want the resultant force to be that way, not some other direction. Talk about the 97% loss in, in horsepower and energy. A lot of it is because the hand is always, is so, spends so much time pushing water some direction other than directly back. Last question. <laughs> what do I tell my swim coach who has me using paddleboards and buoys? Ask him, I would just ask him what, what he thinks the benefit of doing so. What's the outcome? Don't say Terry Lachlan said not to, but <laughs> just, say, just say what's the benefit. I, you know, I, I used those things for a long time and I didn't swim very well. As soon as I stopped using them, all the people I've coached, we swam better. And it was, you know, if they had races, where they were going to give out medals for the person who was best at pushing a kickboard down the pool, I would train for it. But they don't, so I don't. Thanks, Gary. You're welcome.